Peace and greetings, everyone. Divine Zeal here. I'm back with a, another video, and today we're gonna take things all the way back to basics, and I'm going to just go through a quick but thorough overview of how to use Arduino IDE and upload code. So if you're following along with my projects and you want to upload like the firmware for this cipher box. This is a cybersecurity tool that is open source and will be available soon on GitHub. But if you want to use this, you have to know how to code and also edit it if need be. Or you might be wanting to upload code to say a signal generator with the ESP32 or upload code to this uh, BW16 and make a five gigahertz Wi-Fi deal. So let's go through and I'll show you guys how to do that. So obviously the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have a good USB cable that's for uh, data because there are some USB cables that are only for uh, powering a device and you're gonna wanna plug it in and then I'll show you where to get USB drivers if you're using a Windows or Linux machine um, because normally a Mac device uh, should already have USB drivers installed because there's a chip on here that allows for USB communication and um, some computers need drivers for that. Otherwise you'll get errors and your ESP won't be found by your computer. All right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I'll post links down below. If you're not on a Mac, and just to be sure, <clears throat> you're gonna want to download the drivers. And uh, this page pretty much breaks down um, why you need these drivers. So you'll click on the link, and then it'll take you to this page at Silicon Labs. And then you just scroll down to the software, and then they have the universal Windows driver, if you need that one and the Mac ones. And also if you're on Linux, you have that as well. So next you'll come over to Arduino IDE and you'll download Arduino IDE and you could just get the latest version and you'll want to get uh, the ones over here in the download options. These nightly builds are just the daily experimental builds but just download the one for your operating system uh, real easily and if you're on mac uh, make sure you get the apple silicon if you have the newer m series max so once you download it this will be uh, basically your new best friend if you've never used coding ide it's pretty much like a text editor and you can go to the documentation and i'm going to just walk through just the important things you definitely need to know so here before you really do anything the arduino ide is fairly simple there's not really too many icons i mean it's meant to be taught to students and uh, professionals alike so there's not really too much going on so we have the verify slash upload buttons, and these are going to be how you upload the sketch. And then we have the select board, which is very important. So you know which board to select. Um, we have the serial monitor, and this is the uh, serial monitor. And let me select my board so you can see what that looks like. So uh, the serial monitor is how you debug your program. And here you'll see some serial messages coming in a second. So here you can see it's giving out debug data. And then as you can see, I have serial messages to tell me when I'm doing certain things on my board. So next we have the sketchbook board manager, which is where you um, download different files for different boards, like the ESP32. The library manager this is really important where you download certain scripts or certain libraries for your code. So you can think of these as plugins and it's linked to GitHub. So it, it just easily downloads and installs it. But you can also manually install libraries from GitHub or elsewhere as well. And then we have a debugger and then we have a search. So uh, it's a pretty simple uh, layout. So uh, going through each of the important things so you can understand how to like edit 
uh, my code or other projects. Um, the first thing you have is the sketchbook. So this just shows your document slash Arduino folder and all your different projects. And uh, this will be pretty much your canvas. And here we have a basic blink LED example, probably the easiest uh, script. So next, a very important area is the board manager. And here is where you'll download the library files for the board, like the core files. So here you can see they have quite a few, like for instance, the ESP32, um, which you should get. Um, and as you can see, I need to update it, but it has all the board files and these boards will be found in tools and then in board all the individual libraries you download pop up here so if i wanted to select my esp32 i'd go to esp32 and then esp32 dev module and then it selects that so if you needed arduino boards or whatever or you needed to update you can do it just right there next we got a library manager which is this books icon. And uh, this is really important because this will be where you import certain libraries. So you can search for things like, let's say you needed a NeoPixel a library for your LED. You have various different um, GitHub projects, or let's say you had a certain display, SSD 1306 display, very popular one. And you got all kinds of different libraries like U8G2 is a font library for really cool fonts, like what I use for Cypherbox. And then you could uh, keep scrolling all the way up like Adafruit SSD 1306. I use that a ton for the little display. So there's a lot of different important libraries you could get here as opposed to going on GitHub and manually installing them. So uh, next, as I mentioned before, we have the serial monitor and you access this serial monitor through uh, serial.print. And Arduino uses C++, so these are all C++ uh, syntax. And the serial monitor is very important because as you can see here, you can really get a visual visualization of how your script is running. Or I like to put in error messages or just any little action or function that the program's doing add some serial messages in there. Um, like here, um, because it's the basic uh, script, it doesn't have um, the serial in there already. But this would be how you start your serial monitor with serial.begin. Uh, and then I usually like to do a little uh, delay just to let the serial start. And then you can do serial just to know that um, everything is working. So next we have the serial plotter, which <clears throat> I really don't use too much, but it's good for visualizing um, peaks and voltage if you're using that. The next important part is the example sketches, which is really helpful when you're testing out new libraries. So you just go from file to examples. And like how I found this blink example is just in the basics. And this is a good way to just kind of test maybe like a new microcontroller. If you want to test new um, parts of your project, they have a lot of just general plus examples that uh, should work. Although some of them do need tinkering and they're just examples. And then for your boards, then the next one, like you can see here, examples for ESP32 dev module, they have already like a grouping of examples you could test out. Like if you have an SD card, you're working with file systems, you're doing stuff with ESP now, like DNS server stuff, Bluetooth examples, which are really helpful. Yeah, so go through the examples and it's a good way to just see real working code and edit it a little bit and just kind of learn that way. And then you can keep scrolling down and um, they have just the general examples from all your libraries because pretty much every single library that has been published to GitHub has at least one example. That's kind of the standard practice. Like you give the library code and then just a, a small or complex standard example of how the code should be used. So it's really cool to kind of uh, see what the creators have put in the examples. Some are just good to go with the project and you can kind of just tinker with it on your own. Yeah, so that's just with the example sketches. And uh, next is more advanced, but if you want to do more debugging, um, debugging is basically just a way to test your code through um, 
test functions, and then it goes through uh, part of your code to to make sure things are right. Next, there is auto completion. If you would like to use that, you kind of see it here. I guess it's not popping up, but it's pretty standard in most IDEs. It's not as nice as Visual um, Studio uh, Code. Like, let me show you down here. Like, you could. Uh, anyways, yeah, auto completion is pretty standard. Um, then you have remove sketchbooks if you need to. But all that you can look into a little bit later. So whenever you're just getting started with um, a new board, you're going to need to install install a board package. And there's a few different ways to do that. Like I, like I showed you before, you could use the um, board manager, or you could also go into Arduino IDE and then select settings. And then over here, you'll see additional board managers URL. And this is where you can add in custom links and this will download those board libraries for you and install them. And then it will automatically keep them updated because there are some custom board packages that you need to add the URL. And usually in the project, they'll tell you and suggest a certain link you need to add. So once you install the board package, as you can see, it just automatically installs it. So if you have ever have any issues of your board not being found, just make sure you have that. So next, uh, the important thing we're here for, we'll go through the process of how you upload code to your uh, microcontroller. So there's two things, there's verify and then there's upload. So when you click verify, what it does is it compiles a sketch and it just makes sure that there's no errors. So that's a good thing to do. You don't need to have your board connected or anything, but it makes sure you have the core packages for your board and the libraries for like the plugins you're using in your code and that <clears throat> there's no uh, syntax errors. So as you can see here, it shows me the error LED built-in was not declared for the scope. And then next you have upload. The next you have upload, which uh, uploads the code to the board. And before you do that, there's a few things you need to do. You need to make sure you have the correct board selected, and then you need to make sure, you know, if you want to do it and make, make sure, double check to make sure you have the right thing connected. So you want to select the port, and then here you can um, type in your board. So ESP32 dev module. And then you're going to want to go to tools. And first, this can be a little confusing, but there's only a few things here you need to change. First is the upload speed. By default, it has the 921600, but you're going to want to use the 115200. And this is a baud rate for the upload. And the next thing, uh, erase all flash before sketch upload. And you're going to want to enable this because then this clears the last sketch or um, especially if it's a new microcontroller, sometimes they do have firmware installed, like maybe a sample or something. But I always see that there is some, a lot of times really random questionable stuff, but just make sure you have this enabled. And the only other thing that you may or may not want to change, depending on your board, is the partition scheme. And this determines how much uh, space is on your microcontroller. Because some microcontrollers, like the ESP32, uh, the stock ones, the base ones have four megabytes, but it's up to you how you use that. Sometimes I like to just use the no file storage, that's FS. But there are, you know, if you do have a 16 megabyte ESP32, make sure you select that so you use all that space. <clears throat> Otherwise, it won't be able to do that for you. But for small apps, you could just use the default four megabyte. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll just hit select upload after you've selected your board and all of that. All right, so we're going to upload this simple script. I have LED pin as number two, and then all it is basically doing is turning the LED on and then waiting a second and then turning it off. So you'll see the compiling sketch go, and it's sometimes uh, kind of slow. And it's definitely really slow on the bigger up uploads, but I just want to show you what uh, the whole process looks like. So when you're going through it, it doesn't look strange. All right, so when it starts to upload, you'll see this first two lines uh, tells you how much space you're using, how much space is remaining. And this is really important so you don't 
go overboard because the more uh, plugins or libraries you have, like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and all those packages, um, take up a lot of space. So you might need to ration out your space, uh, especially if you have future updates to your code. So you'll see it start to connect if you have the right serial port connected and the right board connected. And then uh, you'll see it start to write. And because this is a pretty simple script, uh, it should upload pretty fast. And then uh, it will reset. And after that, all your code should be uploaded. And for this example, it's just a simple blink script. But that's pretty much it. You know, you can mess around with your code here. And then I'll go to maybe a more advanced script. This is just a feature script I'm working on releasing. But this is just a more advanced look at some more complex code. So as you can see, you start to add way more libraries. And you do that by including. And then as it gets more complex, I like to group my code nice and neat. So I have all the Bluetooth stuff here, the Wi-Fi stuff here, packet stiffer stuff here. I like to make sure to have all my um, variables uh, nice and organized and then my functions. So, uh, you know, it gets a little bit uh, more complex, but it's still um, all pretty straightforward. And then, you know, you have extra files in your folders that all get linked together. But, you know, some practice and uh, just mess around with the easier scripts that are out there. And there's so much open source stuff, it gets a lot easier. So, 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 so that's pretty much it. Um, just a quick run through, uh, because I know that there's a lot of people who are not coders, who are not engineers, and uh, a lot of stuff might seem foreign to you, uh, but that's pretty much the, TLDR of how to upload code and just, you know, some of the inner workings of Arduino IDE. It's a lot more than just knowing how to upload your code because there's a lot of cool ways um, you could really benefit from knowing um, all the little features uh, that go into Arduino IDE. And you don't technically need to use it to code. Um, I personally like to use uh, VS Code um, when I'm working on more bigger projects because VS Code has a gazillion more um, actual plugins and auto completion and a lot of cool um, AI um, auto completion stuff um, if you're into that. And uh, a lot of cool themes because I like color coding my code and stuff. And you can upload um, code to your ESP32 or, or whatever microcontroller. Um, especially ESP32s um, in VS Code. It is a little bit more complex, but Arduino IDE should have just about everything you need. Um, <clears throat> and I think this would be really helpful because um, I have a lot of other future um, projects that are going to be on GitHub soon. Um, and it'd be really helpful for you um, to understand how to use it. So you can also edit um, the code for your own terms or usage. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions or comments, um, or you could uh, email me if you have uh, any issues. Because um, sometimes, like, I'm not going to lie, I know a lot about this stuff, but these things can be um, really pain in the butt um, sometimes to uh, debug. Um, sometimes just even trying to upload them. Um, because I could go a little bit even deeper into trouble troubleshooting with these, because sometimes you need to reset them a certain way. Um, or, you know, you might've just uploaded code to it and now it's not, uh, even reading, getting read by the computer. Uh, so there's a, a lot of, um, troubleshooting and there's kind of a learning curve. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, uh, it's only the tip of the iceberg, um, because there's all different sorts of microcontrollers, um, that have different quirks and um, different things you kind of need to know about. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for now. Peace.